Today's lot build helps to address a problem space that I feel doesn't get addressed often enough in the Sims 3 worlds, whether it's the worlds that come with the Sims 3 base game and its subsequent expansion packs, or if it came with any kind of custom world out there. And that problem space is really the idea of hosting parties on community lots. And how am I going to address it in today's speed build? Well, I'll explain in just a second. Now, for those of you just joining me and just discovering my little corner of the internet, my name is Michael, and I want to welcome you to Sovereign Gaming in Life Sims, the YouTube channel where I build worlds, lots, and share my thoughts on video games in the life simulation gaming space. We are indeed back in that big downtown green gap <laughs> that I am trying to fill in lot by lot of my custom Sims 3 world, uh, Sim City. And if you haven't already guessed, I have released the first public version of it just on my channel, so you can check out the trailer there, or feel free to check out the uh, or download the world in the. Uh, description box that I have attached to this episode. So there's a couple of ways for you guys to get it. Again, it is a blank world where you upload the lot separately. I may eventually upload it with a save file eventually sometime down the road, but I've yet to kind of cross that bridge yet. I've had just got it released now, so I'm just kind of, um, I'm just kind of gathering any kind of feedback on the world download itself from players and just treating it as a project that is indeed a work in progress. But anyways, I'm kind of getting aside from myself here because today we are continuing to fill out that green gap in the middle of the downtown core neighborhood and we've got to do it lot by lot. I have always intended for this uh, collection of lots within this green space to really add some different functions into the middle of the downtown area. Functions that I feel are very necessary within a video game, but also reflective of how downtown areas really operate. I mean, we've done the last build that I did, which was the big park build where we just essentially uh, created a really beautiful, um, picturesque park that is mostly there for Sims to just kind of gather in, enjoy. It's not something that has a whole lot of open space to it, but it's very beautiful and one of those signature parks that cities all over the world really have. And of course, like there was the open pit metro, which was a very complicated build that I had to do. I ended up classifying it again as like visitors allowed. And I don't know why I keep having to, I don't know why I keep deciding to mention that, but I guess I am. So um, the function that I am introducing into this build here that's kind of coming alive right before our very eyes is like I mentioned in the intro here, a lot that is really dedicated to um, to serving the purpose of allowing players to host parties. Specifically, I want them to host parties on this lot for weddings. And so yeah, this lot is really going to be more so a wedding community lot. And I did classify it as a big park as that seems to be the best lot type for this kind of a function. Technically, you could classify it as a small park if you so felt inclined to, but the reason why I decided to classify it as a big park is that you actually can't own small parks as a sim, but you can own big parks. Kind of confusing how that worked out. It just kind of seems like one of those oversights from EA at the times. and. I really wanted Sims to actually be able to own this park uh, specifically just because of the build that uh, goes into it. The vision that I have for this particular lot build is that I wanted to make it the Crumble Bottom Tea House, as you would have probably already guessed from the title description. However, I really wanted it to serve as more of a pavilion for events and uh, to host larger parties and all of that, so I really wanted to um, make it make sense with the way that the structure is built. And the way that I felt 
that it would make sense is again just kind of adding in a bit of the lore and um when i go to the lore and and take some creative liberties of course um in one of the old town builds i built out a french colonial apartment style uh condo i suppose in old town that would have been like towards the beginning of the speed build series here and so i kind of wanted to um i kind of wanted to sort of continue telling that story with the crumple bottoms since you know according to uh the lore and the creative liberty that i have taken with them they are the first founding family of sim city here and so i wanted to kind of continue like where they ended up since we've built out that french colonial penthouse in old town and then i built out the crumple bottom uh chateau in pleasant view there was really no in between houses and I really wanted to tell the story here that there was um, a bit of a transition from, you know, their, them living in Old Town to living in Pleasant View. And before they actually moved to Pleasant View, they actually used to own this property itself. So I really wanted to uh, just kind of tell that story here. And I felt that the best way to do it was to make this um, a proper French chateau or at least a proper French chateau inspired build. And I added a little bit of an extension on the west wing of it uh, just to accommodate a kitchen because, you know, guess what? Like this lot has several functions to it. This building specifically has several functions to it. And one of the functions that I wanted to give it was I really wanted it to be a proper tea house where Sims can come in and enjoy a high tea service in the actual building itself. However, in my opinion, it doesn't make sense to offer Sims high tea service without having a kitchen to actually cook and bake the goods necessary for it. And so that is a part of the vision that I really wanted this particular building to have is that even though it takes a lot of inspiration from a chat uh, from a French chateau, it actually does have several functions to it, including being a place to serve. Um, to serve high tea service at and also a place for a restaurant to just kind of operate out of as well as event space for weddings and uh and community lot parties and so yeah this lot really had to accomplish a lot this specific building i should say has to really accomplish a lot while also still remaining relatively accessible to the general public and so that's what i was really trying to uh, convey with this lot and the structure of it and the construction of it was something that actually challenged me in a couple of ways um more so the dormer windows surprisingly kind of challenged me like i even had to go back and review a guide of some sort i completely forget which guide i <laughs> i watched of course so i can't really drop their name but i had to watch a couple of guides on how to create create dormer windows in the sims 3 just because it's not exactly a part of my wheelhouse and it's uh, something that i wanted to challenge myself with in this lot now in this case here in the tea house itself the dormer windows are purely decorative and they absolutely lead to nowhere so it's like a third story of just like dormer windows that go nowhere <laughs> so it's not like there's a particular function for them outside of them adding into that exterior look and to make the building feel a lot more authentically like a french chateau now the way that i imagine it is that if we go back to the lore before the crumple bottoms would have transitioned into their actual chateau in pleasant view i imagine that when they sold this property or when they repurposed this property they would have had to gut the entire um the entire building itself and so i uh, i imagine that they chose to gut the entire building so that they were able to fit in that restaurant and event space and to really uh, transition it into a proper place of business which is also why i added in a little extension on the west wing which actually serves as a proper restaurant kitchen because i felt like that would be something that would have to be considered sure i probably could have fit the kitchen in uh in the lot somewhere <laughs> like as a room itself but um to me i really wanted to just kind of show that they did add in a whole 
uh, a whole wing really to the building in order to accommodate for a proper restaurant kitchen. So, you know, I wanted to emulate that and I just kind of show that they sort of disguised it by uh, by allowing some vines to grow around it. I think it's pretty well disguised within the building. Of course, you guys can feel free to add in your opinions in the comment section below. But yeah, I know I say this about all of my builds, but I'm actually very happy with the way that this uh, Chateau inspired building actually came out and how it turned out. And to me, it really felt like it was a mansion that was refurbished and repurposed as a place of business that can host the best wedding parties in the city and also, you know, provide that tea service and also the um, the restaurant level service as well. And by the way, yes, I did play test all of these and I did make sure that um, that Sims were able to order from the restaurant and all of that. So there is a mod out there that actually helps players to control the popu uh, yeah, to control like the chef population. And so I'm just going to pop that one up on screen and hopefully if I'm smart, I'll remember to edit it in. And yeah, there's, there's certain contentions like when it comes to NPCs spawning to like run tills at, you know, um, at stores or as chefs in these restaurant builds. But I'll definitely uh, pop up that uh, mod for you guys just on screen here for you guys to check out. As of right now, I haven't actually played with it, but I'm very... Um, as you guys would have known from all of my Life by You videos, something I'm very conscious of is how much population the game wants to add into um, into my game. And so I do have the NROS mod, uh, mods for population control and all that, but they really don't cover the chef, um, the chef spawning population if I've understood that mod correctly. Despite this lot being called the tea house, I honestly think that the restaurant and the tea service parts of the lot are really like the bonus functions to this lot. Really the bread and butter in my opinion is going to be the capabilities for players to host parties comfortably. Specifically, again like I mentioned earlier, I designed this lot to really be able to handle wedding party um, community lot celebrations comfortably and you would have noticed this uh, towards the beginning of the episode but I actually did set a seasonal lot marker on here as well and that's because I wanted to offer some outdoor uh, options during spring summer and fall for players I felt that it was very important to do that because um, obviously you don't want to have like a winter wedding in the middle of outside and really the two places where you'll be able to have an outdoor wedding is either on the balcony that just sits on top of the restaurant kitchen extension and also uh, in the actual park area which you will see me build uh, closer towards the end of the episode. So yeah, um, this lot does have a tiny bit of seasonal uh, changes to it. It's just that I remove the wedding, uh, the outdoor wedding spaces and the outdoor wedding furniture in the wintertime. And that's really it. So it's not like there's a huge change. It's not like I, you know, go all out to make it into a summer wedding or a winter wedding or what have you. In fact, I've actually tried to keep all of the wedding objects as neutral as possible possible and um and the reason being for that is that i just feel that players will want to host weddings of all kinds um with all kinds of themes and all of that so i really wanted to try to keep the um the color palette as neutral throughout the entire build really but especially in the wedding venue areas and um and yeah i I really felt that keeping it neutral and trying to keep it so that it tries to highlight the color white more often was the direction that I really wanted to take it. Of course I understand like there are weddings out there that use 
completely different colors and all that, and that's great. But, um, but for something that fit the theme of the house and for the lore that I was really going for, um, I felt that just sticking to that neutral palette, especially within those wedding venue areas, was especially important and I feel like also flexible as well for players. So for example, I would imagine that maybe players want to associate like a certain color with their wedding party or with the way that they dress their sims. And so that can be highlighted and actually look good in these different wedding venues, specifically, of course, like the indoor uh, wedding venue itself. So, you know, even though you might have like a white wedding dress, which is uh, traditional, uh, <laughs> which is traditional these days, even if you like highlighted it with a certain red or something or even like with another color it can actually still look like it's in place with the rest of the lot build so that was really uh the kind of flexibility that i was hoping to offer with that whether i succeed in that or not is a whole other story because i kind of feel like that's really up to the personal player's taste so you know, if I have to take the L on that one, I certainly will. <laughs> but yeah, like even if uh, you had a sim that had a completely different color theme of a wedding, like let's just say everybody was dressed in red or maybe everybody was dressed in blue or something. I don't think that it would look so out of place here only because of those neutral palettes. I'm hoping so at least, like I'm hoping that you're not uh, well, I'm hoping that players aren't choosing like a really bold blue or a really bold red or something. But hey, again, you do you. However you celebrate those uh, weddings and such is certainly up to you. And whether this neutral palette helps or not uh, will definitely be up to the player's personal taste. And so that's something that I am okay with. And that was some form of flexibility I was hoping to offer players anyways. But yeah, back to the rest of the build. Because this is inspired by a French chateau, I was really trying to, um, <laughs> I guess, reuse the same like French themes that I was working with, especially like within the French condo build that I did in Old Town way back when. And so there's a lot of pastels being used, a lot of gold and white and all that and yes those chandeliers that i had downloaded are certainly making their way back and those downloads are um <laughs> the download link for those chandeliers are certainly in the description box if you are interested in picking those up they are completely free of course but yeah i was really um i really like the way that the interior really uh laid out Unfortunately, like it took me a really long time to actually get there in terms of the form and uh, just to get the functions correct. And even in the great room itself, I really struggled with how I wanted that layout to look because um, at one hand, on one point towards the beginning of the video, I had it so that you can only go up the stairs on one side of it, but then I changed my mind later on if it's not showing on screen already. And so I decided to put like the the uh, staircases on both sides there. Speaking of which, like the staircases are from the uh, mansion lot, like the broken mansion and the restored mansion lot from The Sims 3 store, those uh, stairs and the stair objects to make them into curved stairs came with that lot build pack. So that is where I got those items from if you are curious because they are certainly like a set of stairs and a set of um, like stair items, <laughs> decorative stair items, I guess, that I probably will end up overusing throughout this project but hey you know what it's fine <laughs> i mean i used them in the movie theater um in the movie theater build when i was just building the little conservatory there and i felt that that really worked out nicely and i've used them elsewhere as well i've definitely used them in the uh french uh condo build in old town and i know i keep referring back to it but it's really uh, a build that kind of inspired in a way inspired this one especially for the interior decor uh yeah for, especially for the interior decor but also it's um it was a build that i felt would help to make this lot make a little sense as well so so yeah a little bit of a verbal diarrhea there but hey 
Uh, that is kind of what this channel has turned out to be about these days. I did end up actually cutting out a lot of this episode just because it was really long and I almost feel like it took me longer to build this one than the open pit metro station and a big reason for that I think is just that I'm kind of losing momentum at this point but I really want to see uh this lot build through and i honestly just really want to get not get through but yeah build out the downtown lots before i take any kind of a break and yes i am planning to take on uh to take a break uh shortly here but i definitely want to at least get the rest of the downtown neighborhood lots built out before i do such a thing but yeah um still lots to still do anyways within the downtown neighborhood because we've got this lot to finish up and then i've got another lot to finish up and i'll speak more on that a little later on this episode to kind of uh tease you guys with what's upcoming here because i am even though like i feel like i'm running out of momentum i'm still excited that i have a good idea for it anyways i'll get to that at the end of the episode um but yeah, I am planning to take a break relatively soon just because I have honestly been creating videos and uploading them. And, you know, I think it's I think you can kind of tell that I'm just running out of steam here and there. <laughs> so I've been doing it for about like a year straight. So I think it's kind of time to just sort of take a small little break and just enjoy the game. Maybe like I'll likely still record episodes. I just won't be recording the audio or editing it unless I really felt compelled to. So yeah, I'm taking a, I plan on taking a break sometime soon. Don't worry, I will be uh, releasing a channel update video on all of that as well. So, um, <laughs> so when I do, that's when I will be taking that little bit of a break. But yeah, back to the build here. Um, the one thing that I really uh, wanted to share is just that, yeah, this build took me a lot longer than it honestly should have, and I'm really chalking that up to me just losing momentum during the build. Um, I feel like in the beginning of the build, I overcomplicated the great room, specifically the second level there. Um, just by having it kind of offset and it just had like a really weird shape to it in my opinion and it needed to be more balanced and that was something else that i also wanted to uh kind of share as well is that in this uh build and especially for a lot of these community lots symmetry is a very important thing for me and even at the end of this law build, I don't think that the symmetry is absolutely perfect. I think it's serviceable, but not perfect. Um, and that's really why you guys will see me do time and time again, the uh, different grid layouts and the beginning of these build episodes so that I'm able to perfectly center something or to perfectly align, um, like to perfectly align or divide the lot into different quadrants and such. So. That is uh, something that I will obviously continue to do <laughs> throughout this build series. So if you are like annoyed with these uh, really annoying walls that are just there and just not serving any purpose to me, they are actually serving as guidelines. And, you know, for a uh, for a life simulation game, like having those kind of guidelines would actually do a lot of help. Like I would really need to um, you know, it would be such an advanced tool, don't get me wrong, but it would be cool that instead of me having to draw out like a full wall, that it could just be like highlighted where the middle and where the center is and where the um, where the midpoints are at the edges of the lots. That would be something super advanced, super cool, and something that I would love as a player and as a builder. But that's just me uh, putting it on a wish list somewhere for future life simulation games to hopefully fulfill one day. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Um, so yeah, this lot I tried, I, I honestly like, the reason why it took so long is just that I overcomplicated it. And maybe this is just like the open pit metro really just draining me of my patience <laughs> and creative uh, fuel. But, um, but yeah, like with the open pit metro station, I actually knew what I wanted more um, and I knew how to achieve it better than when I had approached this lot build project. Like 
when I first started out, I just knew that I wanted it to be a wedding event space that sim players uh, could actually host their weddings at in a way that is comfortable, that would meet all of the needs possible, and that would, um, yeah, and that would just like kind of serve as that additional function to this big green space in the middle of downtown. But, um, but yeah, I completely, if I'm going to be honest, I completely forgot where I was going with that. So yeah, I, uh, I totally intended this lot to be a wedding venue space. Now I remember where I was going with that. And with the metro station, I knew it was going to be a metro station. And so yeah, I just didn't know what kind of form I wanted to take, uh, for this to take on. I also didn't want it to look out of place per se, because, um, because it is on a green space and I really feel like the uh, chateau, in, the French chateau inspired structure actually helps to uh, bring it all together in a way. Again, like I mentioned in the last episode, and I know I mentioned this in the open metro pit episode as well, this whole green space in the middle of downtown SimCity really won't start to make much sense until um, until all of the lots are really finished or at least the next one is finished and then it'll all and then it, i feel like it will actually look a little more cohesive and i'll probably have to go back in and edit some of these lots here and there just to get some of the sidewalks to match because we do have that carpeted sidewalk from the um from sim city park uh just west of this lot that just leads directly into it as part of the path um that a sim could theoretically take and so some of that will likely have to be worked on after i finish building all of the lots not episode worthy in my opinion but who knows before i finish up the downtown neighborhood there could be there could very well be another um editing episode uh on the horizon there as um as yeah sometimes those changes are super necessary to make and you know if there's something that is worthy of being filmed i'll actually film it but but yeah um and that's another reason why i've kind of held off on uploading these lots as i build them is that i kind of need to give it some time um for me to actually like them <laughs> i guess i just have like trouble liking my own lot builds or whatnot but anyways i am someone that does need quite a bit of time to actually edit their work like i have no problem i used to not have any problems let me say getting started and actually finishing like the first draft or the first version of a lot i just need a lot more time to actually edit and refine my work and i think like a great example of that is the bridgeview house lot i went back to edit it in one of the more recent episodes and um i think it just turned out so much better just with the small edits even though i essentially had to like demolish the whole thing anyways and you know same with the grocery store lot as well that edit just really did a, it did wonderful things it's going to do wonderful things for the skyline as soon as i get it surrounded with other buildings but but yeah that's going to be the same case here and that's why i hold off on uploading these lots as i finish them is because i do want to give it some time for me to actually edit it and really play test with it a little more um, before making it available for the for you guys to actually download when it comes to wedding venues themselves in the sims 3 i kind of feel like they deserve their own uh, lot classification because there's a lot that actually goes on in weddings and thankfully the sims 3 programming allows us to actually host wedding parties at community lots and essentially like as long as you pack a cake or whatever if you have the generations expansion pack you can just like take it out from your inventory um wherever and still be able to do all the wedding things that you need to do but um but yeah honestly like i'm kind of surprised that it isn't uh classified as its own um community lot type and when it comes to wedding venues in themselves i really find that there is just a general lack of them now i'm not a big wedding player i'm not even a big like storyteller or you know live mode player myself but i know that a lot of players really do enjoy the weddings and enjoy having that kind of 
um, that kind of an event uh, happen in The Sims 3 and all that. So I really wanted to build this lot just dedicated to them so that they have a wedding venue to rent out that is um, in the that is accessible by uh, <laughs> yeah, that is accessible within the Sim City itself. And that's something that I find that like even with custom worlds and with the DLC worlds from the Sims 3 store that, you know, it doesn't get addressed or, um, you know, not enough lots really make for good wedding venues unless you build them out to specifically meet that purposes. It's such a I hope I'm explaining it right, but it, it's such a <laughs> it's such a common problem that I think that players have that I'm surprised that um, more world creators and I'm and again I'm not trying to knock on other world creators haven't really put in yeah they really haven't um, you know taken it into consideration and I hope that that actually changes for Sims 3 worlds going forward for new worlds that are getting created um, because wedding venues are essentially you know very important for players and I feel like giving players those kind of wedding venue spaces is something that players generally would enjoy even though I myself am not pouring in hours uh, <laughs> <laughs> pouring in hours doing uh like playing the live mode of the sims 3 i'm mostly building these days anyways because i got this huge project really <laughs> and the audio recording and the editing does take my time but i know that other players would really enjoy it and even if i had you know decided to play my game properly i you know if i ever wanted to host a wedding this would be the lot that i would likely choose and come to so so yeah, I'm I'm just surprised that wedding venues aren't more predominant in the Sims 3 world. And yeah, I get that there are lots on the exchange. And heck, there's even a lot in the Sims 3 store. And I use a lot of items from it as well um, that are dedicated as uh, wedding venues, or at least marketed as wedding venues. But the lot type itself is always going to be something like a big park or classified as something else entirely. And I just kind of feel like when it comes to The Sims 3, that wedding venues should have actually been a proper lot type itself, or at least like an event space community type lot could be a could have been another classification to use and you know i am totally like not taking into account the different kind of uh lot types that showtime came with when it came with the uh, multiple types of community lots there but I, I don't feel like those would have been appropriate for a wedding venue anyways but yeah, as you'll see me like continue to build out the venue, um, essentially there are two outdoor uh, wedding spaces that you could get your Sims married in uh, that I end up uh, building, one being on top of that balcony, uh, on top of that kitchen extension that I had explained earlier. And also um, there's one indoors as well so that if there is bad weather or if you're getting your Sims married in the middle of winter, they'll always have like a nice, wedding uh wedding ceremony area to at least go to um to at least host those parties with and you know what i think is actually the highlight of the entire lot build is the reception area because again i use a lot of sims 3 store stuff there and again um you know i'm not encouraging you guys to uh take part in my addiction here but if you do download the lot when i do make it available to download if there are missing objects it'll just get automatically replaced so um but yeah the reception was definitely something that uh i felt was a highlight of it because i even gave like a proper like groom and brides table and um and yeah, there's like a dance area to, well, a tiny dance area, I should say. And, um, and yeah, I didn't put any like of the, I didn't put any wall mounted speakers, like none of the ones that came with late night. I just dropped in a stereo here. I, again, I felt like that was more appropriate. I guess like if I really wanted to go hard on this, I could have probably dropped in a DJ booth, but I have never gotten that DJ booth to work properly for me. And I just genuinely don't like the music that it comes with as well. I might do some more play testing later on because, you know, I kind of feel like the EA team has updated The Sims 3 just kind of on the low. <laughs> like I said, it's, uh, you know, before starting the series, it has been a couple of years since I've actually played The Sims 3. Um, 
So it's like there are some changes that I have noticed here that I feel like have just been quietly made in a good way, um, mind you. But, you know, I'll have to just like play test the DJ booth a little bit more just to see like if it is going to work properly for me in the game. Because if it is, I might be a little more open minded to uh, placing it in some lots. But I just plainly don't have the space here in the reception area. And um, and yeah, I'm happy with the way that it turned out anyways. So yeah, uh, <laughs> very happy with the reception area. And I even added in the chocolate fountain there. I thought it was perfect. And I saw it in the uh, in the Sims 3 store um, lot build that they did as one of their cross promotional items. And I was like, okay, that's a that was a neat idea so i just kind of added it in there myself um i do want to circle back and talk a little bit more about editing episodes as well because one thing the one thing that i'm really not happy about with this lot is the bathroom placements that you would have seen in the restaurant i just feel like it's taking up too much space in a way and it's also not um subtle enough it almost feels a little out of place if i dare say so myself but i do also I, I can also defend the size of the bathroom itself and that it is the only bathroom on the lot and the only bathroom on the ground floor so it would need to accommodate for multiple stalls i might go back and shorten the kitchen for example and uh and actually uh, move the bathrooms a little more into the kitchen space that i would have saved on um but that's just kind of an idea that i'm sort of flirting with who knows? Um, I, I kind of feel like it is a good practice to do a bunch of lot edits once I'm finished a neighborhood or once I'm finished like a certain milestone in this SimCity lot build project that I'm doing. And so that might be something that I revisit in the future. But um, but yeah, for the rest of the downtown lots, like I'm sure that I'll have plenty of more things to edit uh, if I dare say so myself, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, this might be one of those things on the item uh, on the list on the to do list for me to actually accomplish when I go back and actually edit it. Who knows? I might actually make peace with the bathroom sizes and all that. And of course, like if you guys have any suggestions, feel free to drop them. I do not mind reading them at all. And you guys have given me honestly like some great ideas out there. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, I was asking about a certain architectural style for the Bridgeview homes. And you guys gave me quite a bit of different ideas and different search terms to actually search. So, you know, thank you to those who actually, um, who decided to respond and thank you to those who just you know liked it and all that that really helped me and i have to say like i love the community collaboration and i really don't mind the suggestions i also just want to clarify as well that a lot of the sims 3 store items that you guys are seeing are items that i've already owned like years back and thankfully i was still able to get them into my game when i had installed the sims 3 i guess last year in 2023 <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, like this SimCity project, this YouTube channel has just been a, pra uh, a passion project of mine. And I really didn't want to uh, limit myself creatively just by, um, you know, just by using the base game and the expansion pack uh, content and objects. I feel like the Sims 3 store does add quite a bit of stuff to it, but I totally get it. Like it is a microtransaction and a half to say the very least and honestly the most recent sims restore stuff that i had got has really just been the movie theater lot um and also the business as usual bistro and if you've been following along with my channel for a while you will know that the business as usual bistro pretty much blocked me from using the edit and game mode in the creator world tool for whatever reason Luckily, I was still able to uh, get this world uploaded and exported and into the hands of players with my first public version. So it's <laughs> such a weird little, uh, <laughs> a weird little problem that I had to run into there. But yeah, and it's also like a big part of the reason why I had decided to export the world blank with the lot separately, which I know is inconvenient for players. But hey, Create a World kind of had kind of forced my hand into doing that. And it also forced my hand in many other ways, such as naming the world itself. And it was just like, 
I had to take the L's where I had to take them. I wasn't really going to fight with a 15 year old program. Um, and yeah, it's like 15 years old or older. Maybe it's like 14 years old. <laughs> Maybe I should do my research before I start talking smack on it. But <laughs> it was a program. It's a very picky program, regardless of how old it is. And it's not something I was really going to fight for. Not when I could get the world into players hands and that they can actually upload it and play it properly. So. So yeah, um, yeah, the Sims 3 store stuff was a lot of stuff that I've downloaded way beforehand, accumulated over the years that I have been playing the Sims 3 and you know, I've worked all my life. So it's always been like one of those mad money purchases. If for those of you familiar with that term, uh, something that I would just kind of like treat myself with, uh, over time and you know, something that I actually myself with i didn't think too hard on it i wasn't i wasn't going hungry or escaping rent <laughs> to try and get more sims 3 store items i feel like i have a healthy relationship with it in a way but i also know when to say no as well i mean you wouldn't catch me i wouldn't be caught dead getting the katie perry stuff pack or whatever the hell that thing was called and i have like issues with that kind of thing anyways and i know like how I know that The Sims 3 store and The Sims in general, especially The Sims 4, is like a huge... Well, it's becoming to become... It's becoming to be a money pit in some ways, and, you know, I don't wish that for other players, but... Again, like, The Sims 3 store stuff that I have has been accumulated over the years, so it's not like I've been going on downloading rampages all i will suggest though is for players to just kind of do their own research uh before actually purchasing any of the sims 3 store uh items and all that and yeah i do think that the sims 3 store stuff um is actually high quality for the most part even though the movie theater never worked for me i can't really speak on the quality of that but for everything else it's actually high quality and I also want to touch on one of those items as well. It was the business as usual bistro. And I do plan to keep reusing that bistro object for several of my builds. I mean, I had the idea come to me when I was in the middle of editing this world in the create a world tool. And what that idea is, is essentially just adding in restaurants where I can, such as this lot here at the crumple bottom tea house because it would absolutely make sense to have a kitchen staff in some capacity to serve people tea and also to cater to events such as this so or sorry to cater to wedding events and such so for me it all like kind of makes sense to have it here and to be honest like i was actually looking to use it in the business uh, tower and the science tower build in downtown because it would just help to liven up the um, liven up the platforms that they were kind of sitting on there so I am absolutely looking to use it in future builds here which is why again you know population control mods will likely be something that I will continue to recommend throughout this uh, series because you know you place one of those business as usual bistro kitchens in there and then suddenly it needs a chef to work it so it's got that need for an npc to actually spawn and i do plan on adding plenty of bars throughout the uh throughout the sim city region as well so there's going to be even more needs for npcs and also some coffee shops here and there and every career needs to have like some sort of a boss for your sins to answer to. So there's like a lot of demands for townies and NPCs in this world. And so it'll be very important for players, I think, to actually uh, control use population mods to control um, their population limits and such. So, so yeah, that's uh, something that I just kind of wanted to share there and something that I have been uh, very careful about adding in a way like I don't want to hinder myself creatively when doing this project but I also um I also totally understand that it places a demand on your world to spawn NPCs and townies and such and that's why like you know this is just general advice out there but if you do use the seasonal lot marker uh quite often 
and you're placing in objects that spawn um that spawn npcs such as like a coffee shop owner and if you don't have those numbers exactly equal to each other so for example if you put in like this is just an example i'm just pulling out of thin air here so it might not be the perfect example but if you're placing in a bar and you set the lot to the season of summer and then you set the lot to the season of fall and then you remove that bar and then in winter you put in two bars well what it's what the game is going to do is it's essentially going to cycle through different townies and then it will spawn for any like missing jobs or missing npcs and that's something that um that's something that can actually this might not be a fact but i am suspicious that this is something that can actually corrupt games and make same game files like too large to load which is again why population control mods are going to be especially important when playing this world because it's not a definitely not a small world it's a huge one and it's a huge one because i really wanted to give players all the options to um all the options to play an entire franchise's worth of content which is something i think that ea really failed on doing now that's not to say that i think it i say all that just to also um reiterate that i don't think that the amount of npcs required to work as bartenders and as coffee shop owners and as uh, cashiers and such is going to crash someone's game. I honestly don't think that at the end of this build because I honestly only have to go through a couple of uh, different community lots. Like it'll be 20 sims or under total. Maybe even 25 if I'm going to be very generous. But um, but yeah, a game can handle 25 townies. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, I'm not worried about that for those that don't play with mods, but the game and the way that The Sims 3 behaves, the way that it likes to cycle through different townies and NPCs and such is super annoying. Like even when play testing this world, it still does a weird little cycle through all of the townies, especially when it switches to a different season because I've got the festival grounds and it doesn't keep the same Sims as <laughs> employed as the... Um, you know, someone who works the kissing booth attendant, for example. So it's just one of those game mechanics that works against the players in a way and something that I'm very suspicious of to begin with. But hey, maybe my suspicions are wrong. For the outdoor wedding space, I actually kept it very simple. In fact, I kept it too simple and this will be definitely on my list of things to do whenever I go to actually do the downtown edits in some sort of a future edit episode. <laughs> and yeah, what I'll do in those edits is I'll actually decorate it up just a tiny bit more with some flowers and such. Again, I really wanted to allow the nature to kind of um, take precedence in the surroundings and um, and having the hedges in the back with the fountain just behind that I felt was something that was adding to the beauty of the outdoor wedding venue. But yeah, feel free to suggest anything below if there's something that you would like to see. Essentially, I feel like I'm just going to put in some of those pedestal pillars with flowers on top and just kind of call it a day. For winter time, because that outdoor wedding venue and same with the balcony one, they'll only be available during spring, summer and fall. Um, for winter, I just left it blank for both spaces. In this space, I don't mind it being blank because I've got the lights there to just kind of light it up at night. And also it's a place to like make snowmen and stuff. So I didn't feel bad about leaving it blank and uh, just as open space for Sims to enjoy. But yeah. For the wedding, uh, for the outdoor wedding venue, I do feel like it is a little too plain, especially watching it now and recording the audio again at the time. And I'm really trying not to defend myself here because there's really no excuse for it. I think I just lost motivation with this lot. And here is just the one place where I lost motivation. And that's something again with seasonal lots that's kind of annoying is that you have to like place the lot, uh, place the objects for each season. I don't think it's a game mechanic that can ever change, but it does, um, it does kind of bring into question like what would be the best 
um, best way to handle that for future life simulation games going forward because obviously things are going to change as uh, seasons change as well and I just kind of feel like um, yeah having to switch it with the marker and then replace the objects was a little annoying for me um, but hey it wasn't the end of the world it's not like it took hours and hours of my time it was just something that's a little annoying but yeah if there's a smoother way to actually do that I am all ears for it. I have no suggestions myself. I just trying to recognize it as a little bit of a problem space going forward. But yeah, um, also like the outdoor uh, gardens, I suppose, was a piece of this lot that I really struggled with. And I just again, I feel like I just lost motivation here because at first I was overcomplicating it by, you know, giving it different levels. Like you had to walk downstairs to get to a, uh, to get to the wedding venue or to the gazebo. And I just didn't like the, I just didn't like how it complicated it. And it also made the lot feel a lot more cramped because I am sort of shortening it on the east side by painting out the sidewalk the way that I did. And, um, and yeah, I decided to keep it simple with the outdoor garden space to it. I just wanted the fountain to match. And uh, and yeah, I just kind of kept it moving from there. Just to circle back again to the different outdoor wedding spots, I placed those outdoor wedding uh, ceremony spots uh, where I did based on the vantage points. So for example, like for the arch outside that just kind of faces the fountain that was done absolutely on purpose in case there are simmers out there that like to take pictures of their sims uh, getting married that you wouldn't have like a background of a parking lot, for example, because that would kind of ruin the vibe. I think you'd get like a better picture on the um, on the ground level outdoor wedding venue than you would on the balcony unless you angled it in particular ways, um, just because there's a lot more going on in uh on the balcony there like you get some high-rise buildings which could be nice that could be a look that you're going for but i really try to aim it so that you would get mostly the uh the big park just west of it and also the mountains and the beach in the background so that was sort of my idea there again i don't think it was executed perfectly but i just feel like the perfect execution wasn't going to be possible as well Speaking of uh, wedding venues, this is not going to be the only wedding venue that I build um, <laughs> that I build for SimCity. I do have more wedding venues uh, in mind, and those again are gonna likely be more outdoor wedding venues. There might be like I might do something similar where there's a seasonal lot that has outdoor and indoor uh, wedding space available, um, but. Yeah, I'm, it's definitely uh, something that I do plan on doing going forward is actually building out a couple more wedding venues just because I feel like this can't be the only choice and I think that it would be nice for Sims to get married on the beach for example. So I've got a couple of uh, plans up my sleeve for, uh, <laughs> for building out more wedding venues. So it's not like this is going to be the only one. I just wanted this to be the most accessible one and the one that would make the most sense in terms of, you know, Sims just needing to go somewhere nearby to get married and host the reception at. And so this would be likely the place of choice. It's not, in a way, like, it's not it's not like a beach wedding, of course. <laughs> it's not like a wedding, like, out directly in the wilderness it's more like a wedding venue that's very convenient but also very nice for the general population and that's really kind of what i was going for i did flirt with the idea of creating like some sort of a church here or a cathedral but that's way out of my wheelhouse honestly and i just feel like it wouldn't have suited this area as well and with the chapel that i built for the graveyard lot i just kind of felt like i didn't want to um flirt more with religious themes than i already had to like even though i built the chapel and really enjoyed it i you know i'm just looking to stay away from uh religious architecture as much as i possibly can where i see fit so i flirted with the idea of kind of making this into a cathedral but the project would have been just too big 
I also likely would not have like I feel like the cathedral and the religious prominence of it would have took precedent over you know over it serving as a wedding venue or at least like the way that I would execute it would likely lean more towards those um religious parts of it and that was something that like I felt like we've had enough of <laughs> in terms of uh, what I've built before in the graveyard and such so you know it really felt right for me that this would just be like a tea house serving more as like a pavilion to the big park area in the middle of downtown that sims would really you know flock to when they want to get married or host a community event i think i mentioned it in the open metro pit build but 60 percent of the lots that are being built in this green space are complicated and i am so glad to say that i am pretty much done yeah, 40% of them. <laughs> Just, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm done about 40% of them, I would safely say, because the next lot that I want to build is the lot that lies directly west of the park that we did in the last episode. And that lot is actually going to be a live venue, uh, classified as a live show venue. Uh, that came with the Showtime expansion pack. And so I'll share more of my idea um, as I actually build out the episode because I am unsure of whether I can actually pull it off and whether or not, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not too sure if I can even pull it off. But it just kind of like goes to show that even though we've got this huge parcel of green space in the middle of downtown, that it's been divided up into lots that serve as completely different functions. We've got the metro station. We've got the big park that Sims can just enjoy and relax in. And then we've got this uh, lot here that really serves more as a wedding venue for Sims to actually host their weddings at. And with the live show venue uh, on the most western side of this uh, park area, it's going to serve as a place for louder entertainment and public entertainment, really. And I can't wait to like really uh, try my vision at that because it is a pretty ambitious project. And you know, once I'm done that one, then I can. I don't want to say sit on my laurels, but the remaining two lots within this green space are actually going to be pretty easy. And, or at least I hope they're going to be pretty easy. I have underestimated lots in the past before, so <laughs> we'll just have to kind of wait and see there. But yeah, um, I ended this lot build just building a gazebo. I haven't done a whole lot of gaze I, This is my first gazebo actually in all of SimCity, so I do plan to build more eventually um, somewhere like where I see where they make sense. But yeah, put in a Domino's, uh, some Domino's games and some chess boards and I felt like, you know, just adds a little more activity to the lot outside of like hosting parties and having tea at the tea house. So I wanted to give it some of those classic park functions because it is after all classified as a big park and we were missing some of those in the last build that I did since it really is more of a beautiful park as opposed to one that's a little more functional like this. Kind of hard to explain because the park can be used for so many different things and yeah. But yeah, next build that I have is going to be a live show venue. I'm very excited for it. It's going to be an open air one, of course. Um, and yeah, I just really hope I've got my fingers crossed that I can actually execute on the vision here. I just need to find the right references is really all that needs to be done. But, um, but yeah, super excited for that one there. And I think that you guys will really finally see this vision come together for this green parcel of land that just lies in the middle of downtown Sim City. And I think that you guys will finally like <laughs> the light bulbs will finally go off and i'll be like okay i can see what this guy is doing with this space now but yeah i'm kind of getting ahead of myself there um another thing that i also just wanted to mention about this lot is that i did take a little bit of time just to add in some flowers and such i didn't pay so much attention to the flowers and to the trees okay i'm giving myself too much of a hard time there 
I like the way that the flowers and trees all came together. I felt like I did it even though simply, I felt like it still turned out looking very nice and very beautiful. Of course, spawners have been dropped and hopefully you guys will see some of the spawners that I've dropped in here, but it's just basic like seeds, uh, butterflies, bugs, and um, I do a bunch of like bird spawners as well and lizard spawners. I feel like players um, that have the pets expansion pack would enjoy you know trying to find like lizards and such and i just you know if i'm gonna be honest like i haven't been keeping track of where i've been dropping all of these uh kinds of spawners so i'm just dropping whatever spawner i feel makes the most sense here but yeah i think that's gonna about do it for today's episode um if you have um if the tours aren't playing <laughs> then feel free to stick around for the tours i do have some nice uh screenshots here and there of this lot and you'll see how it just like meld uh how it complements the uh the sim city park build from last episode so nicely like it all is to me like because i know the vision it all starting to feel like one big green space to me at least Maybe it's translating at this point as well, but if not, hopefully it will translate after the next episode. At this time, I am just going to leave it here and just say thank you again for watching and thank you so much for all of the love and support that you guys show. I really do appreciate it. You guys are awesome as you probably know you already are. <laughs> so thank you again for watching. And I hope you have yourself a wonderful day.